All right, so in this video, I will be doing a walkthrough step by step all the way from installing the tool or downloading it from the NLSC uh, on my thread to seeing the applied 3D accessory in game, seeing the finished product. The accessory that I'll be doing is one of the global accessories, uh, one of the face masks that is included in the files. Uh, in the directory. Um, and so right now I'm just at the NLSC forum um, and I'm in the NBA 2K19 forum. I'm going to click on NBA 2K19 modding and then go to my thread, which is Trevor JPT 33's mods. I'm going to find the post where I have the download link, which is on Mediafire. Just going to save the zipper because that doesn't matter. Um, but the important part is where we save once we unzip it or once we um, once we open it up in 7-zip. The important part is where we actually drag the folder, uh, the directory for the tool. So I'm going to grab this, open it up. And so what you want to do is um, you want to Um, you want to go to the drive, whether it's C, D, or whatever. Uh, in my case, it's the C drive. Um, the, the drive that you have Windows or your operating system installed on. And I believe it should have like this. It should have like a little Windows icon above the drive where it doesn't on these. Um, but so you want to click on that drive where your uh, operating system is installed. Go to users and then your name, whatever your name fold, uh, whatever your name is, um, click that folder and then directly in that folder, which this is also called like your home folder, but it's just users, your name. And so you want to drag this NBA 2K 3D tool folder directly in to there. And now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and delete the files because there were some example files that came with the release. Uh, but just to start from scratch, just to show you the full process, um, I'm going to go ahead and just delete them. So, um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to find the 3D accessory that you want. And like I said, in this case, we'll be doing the uh, in the global accessories, we'll be doing uh, one of these face masks. Um, and so you want to select those, uh, select the scene file for the accessory and the model file, control C to copy. Um, and then you want to go back, paste that in. And then for the model file, you want to rename it to source underscore from. Uh, this just indicates to the tool where the accessory is coming from and where the accessory is going to, which is the player. So um, that's the only renaming of a file that you need to do. Um, and then so now when you go find the files for the player that you want to apply the uh, accessory to, so I'm just going to find Drew Holiday's files. Um, do the same thing where you control C to copy those files in. Um, paste. And so you don't, like I said, you don't, you can just leave that as is. I wanted to make it so you don't have to rename, uh, the file you're actually going to be putting in your modded folder or, uh, importing in Blender just cause it saves a step. Um, so you should have the scene, f the scene file and the, uh, model file for the accessory and the player. And so before we go ahead and run the tool and apply the accessory, what you want to do is go into the scene files, uh, select them both and open them. And um, basically, you're just going to be adding in from the material and the prim section, P-R-I-M, um, whatever uh, contents there are involving the 3D accessory. Um, you're going to drag uh, in the contents of the material in the prim section from the accessory scene file into 
the uh, main hydazine file. So first, there's just this one line in the material. Control C to copy. Um, you want to just add a. You want to have it so the last line has a space, then a comma. Um, create another line for it to be inserted. Um, paste that in, and then also at the end of this line, make sure that um, you have a space after the colon because Blender is like really particular about this. It'll give you an error if um, there's not a space between the colon and the comma, and then on the last line where it's showing it's the last entry, uh, since there's no comma, like you want to have a space there. So like if you click on the line, oops, I did it twice, but um, so that if you click on the line, you'll be like your cursor will be, uh, it will be right there, a space um, with a space in between the colon and the cursor. Um, just one little aside, I can't tell you how many times that I forgot about that and um, gotten a bunch of errors uh, trying to import something into Blender, which is really annoying. Um, okay, so now you want to go to the prim section, go to the end, and then in the, do the same thing, copy the contents over, control C. Um, and so this is uh, the end of this section. So I'm going to to signify or to indicate that another um, uh, another vertex group or vertex groups are going to be entered in uh, under these. I'm going to put a comma after this little curly bracket. Press enter. Click on that line and paste in what I have in this uh, other scene file. And then real quickly. This is just redundant. It's already at the, it's it's usually in the first um, entry or vertex group in here, and it's already up there. So you can just select the line that says type triangle list, delete that, um, and you should be good to go. And so now we'll run the tool. Just double click it to run it. And so ignore all this for now. Um, in further videos, I'll show cases where, depending on where the accessory is coming from um, and so forth, you may need to fill in some information here, which is just like going into Blender, selecting um, selecting the mesh and like just checking in the top right, like what you're just looking for, like the vertex or the the vertex count and the face count with a uh, whatever it is selected. Um, so um, in some of these cases, like you just you're just telling the tool like if you're selecting um, or if you're applying a 3D accessory from a player's file where the accessory is not in its own file, but not at, or but it's at the end of the the player's file, another player's file. That's basically what that's for. You're basically just saying like. Here's the cutoff point where the accessory starts and the um, and where I want to copy over so you don't copy the entire player, obviously. So that's really all this is, but ignore that for now. We don't need to fill these boxes in. Um, all you need to do for this case um, is just press submit. You should see um, you should see some information here uh, that you don't really need to worry about. Uh, it's more for me like when I'm testing just to confirm like what took place. But here you should see task completed and a confirmation screen to exit. So you exit there. And then the test in Blender, I'm going to go ahead and drag this scene file that we just edited and copy it into the exported new folder, which that's where you will see the, the file output by the tool. As you'll see, the size should be different. Um, but yeah, so that's where that'll be. Um, and that where we can check in Blender real quick with the updated file. Okay, export new. Okay, so we're in here. And so you'll see the accessory is applied. I um, mean, it's not going to fit out of the box unless you just get lucky, just depending on the players head shape and size and whatnot, but um, 
I would expect every time to need to adjust it and fit it custom to your player. Um, so it may not look pretty, but it will be there and it will be um, able to be adjusted and fit to your needs uh, however you want. And then so one quick note while I'm in Blender is to make it easier, I have extended the vertex groups and split them up for this face mask as opposed to just having a vertex group for the face mask itself. And these are for, these are the, the accessories included with this tool. I've done this, um, uh, these in specific. So the, things like the face masks included with the tool and the other ones, I've gone in and broken them down into smaller vertex groups to make it easier. So that if you wanted to scale it, you're not just scaling the mask or you're not just moving the mask or the, the whole mask. Um, but instead, if you wanted to just scale the mask or uh, the front mask part um, or one of these straps like the top or the bottom, if you wanted to like move them or scale them or whatever, that you're able to select those individually. So that should help you getting it fit to your player, um, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so look for those at the bottom of the regular vertex groups that you see for the player. And um, so now that we've checked in Blender, we're gonna go ahead and confirm in game that it looks like it should. And so I'm just gonna go to the player real quick before the tool, which obviously just no, no face mask applied. And now I'm going to go ahead and drag in the modded folder, the files that we just updated here in this exported new folder. And we should see the accessory show up just like it did in Blender. And so yeah, there's a 3D accessory. Uh, the, the face mask uh, that we just saw in Blender. And um, so that is all for this video. I will get into further uh, uses for the tool and uh, get more into the nitty gritty in the future, but I wanted to do something for global accessories like face masks, goggles, et cetera, um, for those, because I know there's probably a lot of people that just want to do that. They're not worried about doing some of the more like special accessories and whatnot. So um, there's a process from start to finish and I hope this helps.